and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining us right now is four-star General Michael Hayden, the former director of the National Security Agency and director of the Central Intelligence Agency. General Hayden is also a member of the advisory board at Lignet.com, and I think it's fair to say he's been one of the most influential voices following the Edward Snowden NSA leaking story. Today we're going to talk about the fallout from the Bradley, or Bradley Manning case and the continued debate over privacy and security. General Hayden, it's great to have you back with us. Thanks very much, Sean. Happy to be with you today. All right, let's talk about uh, Army Private Bradley Manning. He's been acquitted of, I guess, the biggest charge in this case, that's aiding the enemy, but he was also convicted on a slew of other charges. What was your take on the verdict? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite satisfied, John. The, uh, the aid to the enemy charge was always a reach. Now, look, he did aid the enemy. And frankly, it's very difficult for me to imagine someone in his position not understanding that if he were to do what he was planning to do and what he did do, that it would not aid the enemy. But that's just not the only topic that the court had to consider. It had to consider his, his intent at that time, his state of mind. And so that was always, that was always a very high bar. So I, I'm not particularly disappointed uh, that that charge uh, was, was dismissed. I mean, being convicted on five charges of espionage that's a non-trivial event, both nationally and, and certainly in, in this young man's life. So, you know, the judicial process is designed to give us a sense of justice and of closure, although some other recent court cases don't seem to have done that. The verdict yesterday gives both those senses to me. It was just, and we've got a sense that this chapter, at least, is now over. And what kind of message, you know, we, we've seen Snowden here and, you know, there's this, uh, I guess, idealism that maybe runs through uh, some people who hold these positions that, that have access to this type of information. But what kind of message do you think this sends to other members of the military who are dealing with this type of information uh, just like Manning was? Well, I, I actually think that may be the most important uh, aspect of yesterday's verdict and of the whole process, John. It's, it's the deterrent effect. And that's certainly a legitimate effect of our, of our court system. Look, I'm not suggesting we've got other Mannings and Snowdens in our ranks, but we are recruiting from that generation of young Americans that creates young folks like this, folks whose balance point be, between secrecy and transparency is quite different than the balance point of their parents and, and, and grandparents. And so yesterday's verdict, I think, sends a very powerful message to this whole cohort of folks, almost all of whom are working hard and loyally and successfully for the United States. And it's, it's just simply this. Whatever it is you think the balance point between security and transparency might be in your private life, whatever it is you decide will or will not go on your Facebook page, when you come to work, there are certain standards that the federal government will demand because you have taken an oath of office to protect very sensitive and classified information. And we will expect you to protect that information according to our standards, not yours. And so always remember that actions will have consequences. And frankly, I think that was a very important message yesterday. Uh, it's a very clear uh, distinction that you bring up there. And, you know, that idealism uh, cuts both ways in this case. It's, a, it's what leads a lot of young uh, people to join our armed services, hoping to do good in the world. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it can be taken too far, as, as this case might exemplify. You know, as we await the sentencing here, what do you think would be an adequate punishment uh, for the crimes that Manning is now convicted of? Well, you know, having not watched the trial in detail, have broad knowledge of its contours, I would not be surprised, John, if he got 40 years or more in the final sentencing. That's a, that's a significant sentence here. Now, um, we've also seen how Manning has become a cause celeb, so to speak, with the whole I am Bradley Manning campaign. Is it fair to say that as Americans, we have a certain expectation of privacy, but what do you say to the people like Julian Assange or the rest of the crowd, uh, the Michael Moores of the world that are using Manning as a poster boy for more government transparency? Well, first of all, the way you frame the question is in itself, I think, quite insightful and very revealing. Uh, I think this young man, who is guilty of doing very bad things, don't get me wrong, 
uh, this this young man, in addition to his, to his own issues, the, the mistakes he's made, he's been horribly exploited by other people, uh, some of whom you've named, uh, and none of whom are facing the full force of American law. So I, I think, number one, it's very important uh, to point out that uh, it is not necessarily true that these other quote-unquote supporters of Manning actually have Manning's best interests at heart. Uh, they may have some romantic commitment to a higher cause, like absolute transparency, rather than the issues in, in this young man's uh, life. And, and so, yes, we, we, we do have this broader question that there is an element of our society that believes <clears throat> almost in total transparency, or at least total government transparency, and now, I, I spent an awful lot of time talking to newsmen, most of whom are actually quite reasonable people, talking to newsmen saying that as that privacy is to individuals as secrecy is to government. And when I say that, they, they kind of have this impulse to push back, say, no, that's not right. You're, you're saying something wrong there, Hayden. I said, no, no, privacy is to individuals as secrecy is to government in this very important sense. There are some things that both governments and individuals should keep private or secret. And it's also quite clear that both governments and individuals from time to time abuse that right to keep things private or secret. And, and, and when, when you come at it from that point of view, you know, with the premise that, no, no, not everything should be made public, either out of a personal life or out of our collective life, right? Uh, then you then you're ready to have an adult conversation, you know, rather than arguing over the fine print of the diplomatic cable from Tunisia that should or should not have been put into the New York Times. Yeah, you know, it, this is you know kind of almost caused you know, not just with Manning but with Snowden sort of an existential crisis with a lot of Americans. But I think it's positive to see this debate happening right now, and we're also seeing this on a very national uh, type political stage with this, uh, I don't know if bickering is the right word, but you've seen this back and forth between Senator Rand Paul, uh, who is maybe the most vocal advocate in Washington, D.C. for the civil libertarian perspective. And then on the other hand, we have New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, uh, who seems to be okay with the metadata phone program, the prison surveillance program. Um, you know, in terms of this debate we're still continuing to have in this country, would you say someone like Rand Paul maybe is being a little too idealistic and maybe there might be political motives involved? Uh, you know, I, I, I never make that judgment about any of our, our any of our uh, national leaders. But he certainly does have a stark view of this, doesn't he? I mean, he comes he comes at it from an absolutist uh, point of view, and and it's look, I professional intelligence officer, I've had to speak to a whole variety of senior leaders in and out of uniform, in the executive branch, in the Congress, and, and you've got to know your audience. And, and I think a very important thing for Senator Paul is to have someone come up to him and actually explain what it is the government is doing, because I, he does seem to be operating under some, some misinformation and, and misapprehensions. And look, at the end of the day, if Senator Paul or you know, Senator Paul and 99 of his other friends say, hey, we're going to draw the lines for you guys differently than we drew in the past. The only thing I'm entitled to in that conversation is to offer them the judgment that if you draw the lines here, here's what I will and I will not be able to do to keep you safe. And as long as everyone in the room kind of nods their head and says, yep, that's, that's the balance we want, my job is to salute and play very aggressively they play on my side of the line, they've drawn for me. And in fact, I, I will tell you this, one of the biggest problems people like me have while we're in government is the failure of people to go out and give us that very clean, crisp kind of guidance. So, so in one sense, Senator Paul may be wrong, but he's clear, and that's not bad. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's one side of the argument, there's other sides of the argument, and uh, you know, you got to applaud him for uh, taking a stand on this and being clear, but uh, on the other hand, 
you know, it's always difficult when you're having a national debate or any debate for that matter to deal in absolutes, as he seems to be doing. Lastly, General, I want to follow no, up with, right. with, right. Ed, with Edward Snowden, and, and it now appears he's going to have some sort of asylum in Russia, even if it is temporary. But as long as he is a fugitive and Russia appears to be harboring, how big of a, or harboring him, I should say, how big of a black eye is this uh, for the Obama administration? Well, I, I know the president tried to downplay it. What he say in that one comment? I'm not going to get involved talking about a 29-year-old hacker and so on. Uh, so I think he wants to limit the diplomatic damage and to be very candid, I think he also wants to limit the, the political damage because, you know, he, this is not the president's fault, but it's certainly happening on his watch. And in this, so this could end up being the most serious hemorrhaging of American secrets in, in the history of, of our country. And, and so I do think, I do think that Russian behavior with regard to Snowden isn't a sidebar to the current relationship between ourselves and Moscow. I actually think we have the right to simply tell the Russians, this is an important thing for us, and your behavior on this question cannot help but affect the overall health of the Russian-American relationship. I don't think we should be embarrassed about that at all. I've noticed the White House press spokesman kind of downplaying Snowden and saying, oh, we've got other far more important matters to discuss with the Russians. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's right, and I don't think it's wise to simply dismiss uh, some, some aspects of Russian behavior like this pretend it never happened, and then get on to other issues. Yeah, you mentioned those uh, more important issues, perhaps, and Syria being one of those. Um, and, you know, and also it's you know, kind of uh, stunning to hear you say this could be the most serious hemorrhage of uh, classified information or, or highly sensitive information. So uh, you know, I think, uh, I think maybe a lot of Americans would feel better if Snowden were back here in this country to face the music on the things that he has done and have his day in court. But it was, as always, General, it's been an enlightening conversation. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and we look forward to doing it again soon. Okay, Joe. Well, thank you very much. Our pleasure, and thank you for watching Newsmax TV.